Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here. Welcome back to yet another Real Railway Adventure. Today you are joining me from beautiful Bookfastly on the South Devon Railway, which I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say is probably my favourite heritage railway. Absolutely beautiful. It was a bit of a rainy, miserable day, but it didn't spoil things too much. And as you can see, what a beautiful yard they do have there over at Bookfastly. So yes, we're going to have a bit of an adventure today. Come with me. I hope you enjoy what's going to be cracking off. The first engine of the day was this, a beautiful London transport liveried pannier tank. It's a 57XX, this one was built in 1930, and you can see just how lovely it looks there. Uh, even in the rain, it looks quite smart, doesn't it? And I tried to get one or two different shots of it from different angles so that you could um, enjoy it. I particularly like the smoke or steam billowing up from it there. And uh, here comes Fred Dibner to show us the train, as you can see, some lovely coaches. And I did take the time to have a quick look inside these coaches because they just, the originality of these coaches seems to strike you, or the original condition of them rather. So here you can see is the uh, brake coach or the back end of the brake coach. And you can see it is all, well, I don't know if it's original, but it certainly looks it. It's certainly been preserved somewhat as it would have been. And the compartments are also very nice. Yes, they do have actual compartments on the SDR coaches. And as you can see, they look pretty original as well. Anyway, while I was sat in one of these compartments, yet another beautiful engine pulled up. So I, and I obviously couldn't resist taking a few nice shots of her. Uh, so here she comes now. It's another pannier tank, actually, uh, a 94XX, I believe. And uh, we'll see more of this later on. But as you can see, it's got the water caps being shut there. Uh, I think this was quite early on still, when it hadn't been doing much running yet. But yes, quite nice to see two panniers in one go. Very, very nice. Anyway, you're about to get blasted with steam. <laughs> there we go. As the London Transport 57XX uh, started off. So here it goes now. And this is the lovely South Devon Railway route. And it is very lovely as well. So I, I, you know, I didn't get too much of the actual journey because I suppose it, it gets dull quite quickly. But uh, it is very scenic and very lovely, and uh, I can highly, highly recommend getting on it and giving it a try. Uh, we've got a bit of a <laughs> minor interruption there, but not to worry, not to worry. And just look at the beautiful signal box as well, um, all of which are in use, there's several of them along the line, and uh, all of them are very, very lovely indeed. That's the Book Fastly South signal box, as you could see there. And yes, there goes Book Fastly up back into the distance, and we will be coming back later on in the video. But for now, here we go. As you can see, this is one of the corridors from the coaches. Look how original it looks. I know this is probably not that unusual, but yeah, it's just amazing to see coaches in such unchanged condition. Fantastic, really. And that's one of the compartments in motion, as you can see. Interesting window raising and lowering mechanism there as well. Here comes the second very scenic signal box of the day then. This is, I forget which one this was now. Um, I'll tell you in a minute, but uh, there you could see the token being passed along there. And uh, the staff are also friendly as well. They always stop and give you a wave. It's the first of, well, two extra stations on top of Book Vastly. If you keep an eye on the left there, you might see a model <laughs> that uh, I've reviewed. That's, a, a, I think, a Wickham trolley or something quite similar. It's quite interesting to see that. But yes, uh, this next station, the name is coming up, there it is, Staverton, is I believe an original station. I don't think this has been changed too much and you can tell really, can't you, how, uh, how old fashioned it looks and how quiet it is as well. I haven't just turned the sound off, it really was dreadfully quiet there, so very, very lovely and peaceful. Anyway, from there it is off to Totnes, here's another shot from inside the compartment, which I must say I did enjoy very much. And here we are, this is Totnes Station now, with the uh, lovely London Transport pannier arriving. Bunker first, of course, on yet another nice curved station platform, the second one that I've showed this year. So just like on the Dartmouth Steam Railway, the procedure is that uh, one of the engineers will get off and decouple the train and it will run around to the other end of the train and take it all the way back to Bookfastly. And it just shuttles back and forth all day like that. And uh, it's actually a very, very good deal. I think it only cost us £16 a piece, a person, which isn't bad, is it, for, a, for all day travel? I mean, you can't beat that, can you? 
And so here we have the pannier backing up. There we go, another cloud of steam. Really made me want to get a London transport pannier tank now, a, a, a Backman one, I mean. I do have a, an old Hornby Trying one. Um, but yeah, seeing this here did uh, show how different the livery actually is from that Trying one, which is a little bit too red, if you like. But there we go, that's the Totnes Station sign, as you can see. And Totnes Station is very, very interesting. There's quite a lot of railway armour about, as you can see. Lots of railway rolling stock, some of which is sort of left to rot, but some of it's in fairly decent condition as well, as you can see. We've got a crane, that was quite interesting to see. And the canopy here at Totnes was originally from Axbridge on the Cheddar Line, I think. It was actually dismantled and brought to the SDR sometime in the late 80s or 90s, I believe. But yes, that was not built at Totnes. That has been moved there, which I thought was very interesting. Anyway, time for the pannier tank now to cross the points and head over to the back end of the train and take it back to Bookfastly. So here she comes. Do apologize if there is any mess on the lens at any point in this video obviously yes it was it was a bit of a rainy day and of course with Sutton I don't know steam shooting at the camera all the time from the engines you do sometimes get a bit of cack on the lens I was forever cleaning it actually so um, hopefully it's not too bad I've not noticed too much but yeah I know there are at least one or two shots where there's a smear or something on the lens but I was I was aware of it and I was trying to keep it to a minimum Another well, signal box, there we are, that, what was that one? Can't quite read that, it's going to be top nest something, signal box I assume. Look at the fireman's tools there on the back. <laughs> fireman there giving us a wave. <laughs> and there we are, there goes the coupling back to the back end of the train. This was the largest of the two trains, I think it was five or six coaches on this particular train. The other one only had two, and we'll see that. Here's a few other coaches, this is one of the, well, this was the refreshment car, if you like. I would say dining car, but it was just tea and coffee and a few cold snacks and that sort of thing. But it's all very fine, of course. There we go. That was the whistle. And now we're departing Totnes. But, of course, we'll be back later on. We'll be back on the, the other train. Of course, I'm going to show you a bit of the other pannier tank that we saw briefly at the start. Because, uh, yes, couldn't resist that, obviously. In a BR black. We'll see that very shortly. But there we go. This is the... The journey back now to Staverton. And there we go. That is the back of the, well, the 57XX. With the lamp on the back. Token passing back. There we go. Yes, they, they can't do that, obviously. And I, I guess they'll have to pass that on then. There we go. <laughs> onto the other engine so that it can proceed. That's just a safety precaution, of course. Back at Bookfastly, they had a diesel doing some shunting works in a lull while there were no trains in the way. All it did was it just came out straight over there, across those points, and then back into the goods yard via a slightly different siding. Not 100% sure on which shunter that is. It looks like a, an 03 or an 04, but what it actually is, I couldn't tell you. I'm going to guess it's one of the two. If you, if you know any better, please do let me know. I probably have gotten that wrong. But yes, it was it was a nice bonus to see that, I reckon. Anyway, let's take a look at the other tank then, which is a 94XX in BR Black. It's quite a lot more modern, actually, than the London Transport one was, uh, built in 1952. Amazingly, it was hauling this train of auto coaches in quite a strange formation. It wasn't just two auto coaches or one as normal. I think there was three or four. And of course, auto coaches have the controls for the steam loco inside them here, which obviously wouldn't work. I don't know whether the 94XX had auto coach facilities or not. Uh, and they certainly weren't using them. But yes, it was quite nice to see the inside of an auto coach there. I don't think I've ever been in one before. So that was quite a nice new experience. And here we go again. Another nice journey. This is it uh, arriving at Staverton.
So which of the two engines did you prefer? Did you prefer the first 57XX or the 94XX? It's difficult to decide. I think for me, because I prefer the, you know, I prefer my engines older, the better. I would say that the London Transport one did it for me, uh, especially because it was in that lovely livery. But no, they were both fantastic. And uh, this train does get extra points for the auto coaches, it must be said, yes. I do love me an auto coach, or four. It was very lovely. Nice surprise to see that. And here we go, back on the trip to Totnes, which is obviously the most interesting part because you get to see the engine decouple and run around to the front of the train. Anyway, I got a chance to get some decent shots of this 94XX for you there. As you can see, a nice, bit, nice little close-up just before it pulled away from the train. Yes, a very smart-looking machine, really. And I don't think this is one I'd ever seen before. I'm pretty sure the London Transport version was there last time I came. But I can't remember seeing this one, so this might have been the first time I ever got to experience this particular engine, which is always nice, of course. There it goes, much, much in the same way as the 57XX did, but of course facing the opposite way. Which is nice, again, that gives you a bit more variety. We haven't just got engines facing the same way all the time. And of course that left a nice look at the auto coach end there, which is quite recognisable as an auto coach, isn't it? And here we go, with the engine backing up. There we are, look at that. It's quite something, isn't it, that, yeah. Another big billow of smoke as well, or steam, I suppose. <laughs> it's probably a mixture of both, really. So this was quite interesting, obviously steam locals need water and this one's no different so we actually, well, I was lucky enough to be in the right place as this one got a fill up. And quite noticeably more water ended up on the ground than inside the loco. <laughs> I think somebody needs to call a plumber with this particular one. Yes, but it seemed to do the job. The engine did make it back to book fastly, so I guess it was successful. But yes, quite a lot of spillage going on with that. <laughs> poor, poor chap doing it got a bit drenched, bless him. But as you can see, yep, yeah, all was well that ended well. And back to the front end of the train. Of course it's not all steam engines about, at Totnes you do get the odd glimpse of a much more modern train going by which is quite interesting, I got a few of those over the course of the day. Anyway, time to depart then, there it goes and I did stay off it this time so I actually got to film the entire departure which was quite interesting with the auto train. Yeah, I, I had no idea they were running auto coaches on the SDR. I think the last time I came, I'd never even heard of an auto coach because it was five years ago or something like that. So either they were there and I just didn't appreciate them as auto coaches, or maybe they've only just got them. I'm not sure. I wouldn't have thought so. But like I say, I can't remember seeing them before. But I have now, that's for sure. And it was a lot of fun to see those, especially to get inside the cab and see those controls. That was very, very interesting, that was. There we go, level crossing open. Of course, they've got the wild bird section over at um, Totnes. So there are owls and things being carried around, which is always interesting. And here we've got another modern train for you. There we go. So if you're not a steam enthusiast, well, goodness knows why you'd still be watching this, but uh, there's one for you either way. And with that, I think that is more or less it. Uh, just a bit more footage going back towards Bookfastly and that, uh, well, what I thought was a Wickham trolley. A lovely day on the SDR, I hope you enjoyed seeing parts of it as well. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Cheers folks, take care.